Here in Studio One, I've got this really problematic bass recording. For starters, there's some electrical hum, which I can just about hear in the quiet sections, okay? I'm gonna loop a little bit at the beginning here, and if you've got good monitoring, you may be able to hear it yourself. Have a listen. Okay, so it's fairly quiet, but I'd rather it wasn't there. So I want to get rid of that in the quiet sections of the playing. Secondly, some of the actual playing's timing is not that great. If I go to a little grid line here and click on there, you can see how late this particular note is, okay? And further up here, here's another one. This one's a little bit late. Now, I'm all for a little bit of sort of humanness in playing, but these are probably too far out, and they're going to be pretty annoying, especially when, there's, when we've got some some drums alongside. Thirdly, I think the whole thing is just a little bit too quiet and I'd like to make it much, much louder. Now, before I fix all of that, I wanna ask you a question. Are you aware of the quantize audio, remove the silence in between notes and normalize to minus three dB, then color it red command in Studio One? No? Well, that's because you don't actually have it yet. I've got it, and I've got it assigned to a keyboard shortcut, in this case, Control-1. So if I just go ahead and select my clip here and press Control-1, hey presto, all of those fixes are done. It's actually removed uh, the silence in between the notes, so it's got rid of that electrical hum. You can see the whole thing is much, much louder, and if I look at some of those notes as I did before, you can see they are now nicely in time. And I colored the whole thing red because well, I can. Now, if keyboard shortcuts are not your thing, you can also assign these custom commands to a button on the interface. So what we're gonna do now is go up to the top and I'm actually gonna click on this button. This is the macros button. I'm giving the game away a little bit here. I'll click on that and you can see my custom button here. Now it's called Fix the Base, which I thought was a much catchier name for the command. I'll just undo what I already fixed there, then click on my Fix the Base button. And hey presto, just like magic, it's fixed. <laughs> Hi folks, I'm Mike, and I hope you're well. Everything you saw there was made possible with something called macros. Put simply, macros give you the ability to take a bunch of existing commands in Studio One, string them all together, and execute them all in one hit. Now there's a bunch of really useful macros that you already have with Studio One. I'm gonna show you how to get to those. There's some great ones in the community which are easy to get hold of and install in your Studio One. I'll show you how to get those and you can create your own. I'm gonna show you how to make those, all in today's video. Let's get started by looking at the existing macros you already have in Studio One. If you go right to the top of the screen in Studio One, you'll see the macros button just here, right next to the quantize button. Now I have a confession to make. I've been looking at the icon of this button for some years, and I've never figured out quite what it represents. Am I missing something really obvious here? Let me know in the comments down below, because I don't know about it. Anyway, you just just click on that to reveal your macros. And when you first do that, you're gonna see what they call a page of macros that are assigned to buttons along here. This is the global page because these macros are used globally. You can see it says global right over here on the left. So for example, in this Zoom group of macros here, you can see, for example, I can click on S to make my tracks really small or medium or large like so. Or I can just go back to the overview view that I had before to make it like so. Okay, so these ones you can use globally. If we go over to the left and go to this drop down menu, we can select different pages, a page for audio editing macros, for example, or another page here for music editing. These are more sort of related to MIDI or piano roll functions and music creation, etc, etc. You can see a number of different pages there. I encourage you to explore these macros to find out what may be useful to you. Perhaps the macro you would like to create is already there. So definitely check those out. So as I mentioned earlier, there's already some existing macros available in the community. They're easy to install and get up and running with in just a few minutes. So let me show you how to do that. I'm going to open up my browse panel by clicking on browse on the bottom right here. And then I'm going to go across to cloud at the top here. Yeah, I'm just going to click on the sign in button at 
the bottom there, okay? So now I'm signed in, I'm just gonna go into the Personas Exchange here, double click there, and then I'm gonna find macros and double click there, okay? Takes a moment just to retrieve all the mac macros which are available. Then we can see the groups of them here. So I'm just gonna scroll down, and look, oh, there's something by Joe Gilder here, one of my absolute favorites. So I'll just double click on that to go into Joe Gilder's folder, give it a moment. I see there's just one macro in here, it's called bus and rename. There's a little explanation at the bottom for what it does, so it creates a bus for selected channels and renames the bus, okay? So what I'm gonna do is just click on the install button here, okay? It will download it and install it automatically for you. And then it opens up something called the macro organizer, which in my case, it's done on my second screen. So I'll just drag it across to this screen so you can see it. Now this may look a little bit different for you because they've changed this in version 6.2, okay? So you can either update to 6.2 or you can just sort of run with what you've already got. There's not too major a difference in what we're gonna do here. The reason it opens up the macro organizers because there's not much point in installing a macro unless you at least assign a shortcut to it, okay? So what I'm gonna do is search for the macro we just installed, it was called bus and rename. So I just typed in bus here. You can see it here. I'll just select it and click on shortcut. It's going to open up my keyboard shortcuts. It's already got the macro selected. You can see that here. So I'm just going to go over to here and assign a key. Now I'm going to go for control three. Okay. It would be command three on Mac and I'll just click on assign there and apply and that's all done. Okay. So I'll close that window um, and that macro is all ready to use. I don't actually know really what it does, but Let's give it a go. Um, I'll open up my console here, select this one. I guess it's gonna create a bust for it. Um, so I'll press control three. I've got some sort of dialogue box here. It's asking for a name. Let's call it Mike. I don't know if that'll be fine. Um, you can see that a bus has actually been created there. So that's cool. Um, click on OK. And it's look, it's renamed my channel here. I'm not sure if it was supposed to do that or not. But you get the idea here. It's pretty easy to grab one of these. So another good place to check before you go ahead and make your own macros. And you can also adapt these to your own needs as well. But talking of creating your own macros, let's take a look at how we actually do that. So we're going to create a really simple little macro which is going to create a fade in on this audio up to the point where we currently have the mouse cursor okay so to start with we need to go to the studio one menu on windows it's kind of just to the right hand side of our menus here on mac it will be all the way over to the left but select that and go down to macro organizer and i'll just drag it off my other screen onto this screen so you can see it now as i mentioned earlier this may look a little bit different for you uh, unless you're using the latest version which currently the time of making this video is 6.2 so once i'm in here i'm going to click on this new button to create a new macro so i click on that and this new dialog appears. So here I'm going to give my macro a name to begin with. So we'll just call it fade, uh, oopsie, try that again, fade in to now. Makes sense, doesn't it? Okay, so we can, give, you know, we can add it to a group, give it a description, all that good stuff. But we'll focus on the really functional stuff. The first thing that I want to do is assign some sort of command to this. Now you can search for all of the commands available in Studio One over here. Now I happen to know that the first thing I want to do is sort of locate the mouse cursor. So I think that the command I'm looking for is locate mouse maybe here it is locate locate mouse cursor so i'll select that and click on the add button okay now i'm going to add to this uh, macro in a moment but just for now i'm going to click on okay because in order to test what's going on i actually need to assign um, a shortcut to this okay so here is our macro you can see it here fade into now i'll select that and then i'm going to click on shortcut and let's assign control one to this in this case. So press control one here. Oh, that's already assigned. We'll try another one, control two, for example. Click on assign like so, and then click on apply at the bottom, close that window. So that's useful because we've already got this assigned to um, some sort of shortcut so we can test it out. So I'm gonna do that now. I'm just gonna hover over my clip here, press control two, and you probably didn't really see, but basically the transport has moved to whatever position my mouse is at. Okay, I'll do it again. Control two, 
and you see the transport has moved there. So that's the first part of what I want to do for this macro. So I've got the macro already selected here. I'm going to click on edit to add my next command. And my next command is about fading into wherever the cursor is. So I'm just going to search for that. It's called fade in. There is fade into cursor. So I'll just click on that and then add that, okay? Now, basically, this is already going to sort of do everything we want it to do, but we, I just want to make sure that we've deselected everything that's selected after this, just to kind of tidy up. So I'm going to go for deselect here when I, well, maybe that's not what I'm looking for, or maybe I spelt it wrong, okay? Uh, D Desel, Mike, try and spell. Deselect all, there it is, okay? So click on that add that okay and i've got my three commands there in my macro i think it's ready to go i'll click on okay and i'm just going to test it out so i'll just hover my uh mouse over here somewhere and i'll click on control 2 and as you can see that's working absolutely perfectly so that's the basics of creating macros but you would have noticed with all of those commands there were basic commands with no arguments let's not get into an argument about this so in macro terms an argument is like an option or a value that you're going to set for a command so let's do a simple one here with our existing macro so in the macro organizer i'm going to click our macro which is fade into now click on edit and i'm going to search uh, for the normalize command okay we'll just start to type normalize this is the one normalize audio i'll click on that and add it to our commands now you notice with this one i've got this state value over here okay in the arguments column okay this is where i'm going to set the value that i'm going to normalize to so i want to normalize this to minus three decibels so i'm just going to double click on that it opens up this little box this is where i type in my arguments so i'll type in minus three click on okay and i also actually want this to happen right at the beginning of the process okay so i'm just going to move this up so that it's the first command within our string of commands i'll click on okay go ahead and click on or select the event that we're going to do this on and then I'm going to move my cursor to the position where I want to fade to and press control 2 bang and you saw it's actually made the waveform quite a lot louder it's normalized it to minus 3 db and then it's gone ahead and done the fade in that we had before so if you remember when we click on the macros button right at the top here it opens up pages of macros and the page we're on at the moment is the global page now i could go ahead and add new buttons to any of these existing pages if i wanted to however i want to show you the kind of complete process of actually creating your own pages your own groups and then adding your own buttons it's very very easy once you know how so over on the left hand side where i would normally select different pages i'm going to click on this little cog icon here so i'll click on that and i'm going to go down and select new page it creates a new blank page and it names it some default name in this case page eight so i'm going to right click on where it says page eight because i want to rename this okay now don't go looking for the rename option it's not there what you need to do is actually double click on the name at the top here page eight in this case i'll double click on that and i'll type in my new name which is going to be uh, studio one revealed okay so i'll click on enter and that has renamed this page okay just click anywhere to get rid of that now before i can actually add any buttons i do need to add at least one group okay so i'll just right click anywhere in this blank area here and select new group it creates a new group called group not very inspiring so i'll right click on that and again at the top here where it says the name of the group i'll double click and let's uh, call it uh, magic okay so it's renamed to magic now I'll just click anywhere to get rid of that so i've got my group and now i can add a button okay so i'll right click anywhere here and then i'll just uh, do new button okay and it's created a new button not very exciting it's just a blank sort of button okay so let's go in and adjust this so i'll right click on that um it's got no name at the moment it's got this sort of blank gray area so let's double click in there and we will call this you know, fade in very simple name there 
Again, I'll hit enter. So we've got our button now called fade in. It's not going to do anything if we click on it because we haven't actually assigned it to our macro. So we'll right click on that and then click on assign and then macros and we will find our, and there it is, fade into now. That's the name of our macro. I'll click on that and now the macro is assigned, but I want to make it look pretty. Of course I do. So I'll right click on this button again and I'm going to go to icon i'm going to go to select image it's going to open up a file dialog here i've already made a little png file just a tiny little one here little icon i'll click on that click on open and you can see now my button has a little icon on it how sweet you don't have to have icons but i like to have them and if i select this and then click on my button Hey presto, it works. The macro I showed you right at the beginning of this video had a little step in it where I removed the silence in between the bass notes to try and get rid of that kind of hum sound that I had in there. If you want to find out how to strip silence in Studio One, take a look at this video which I made right here. Thank you.